The name's Lens. To the Lens. Greetings to whoever this may concern, Christian Aguilar here back with another movie review, and in today's movie review, I am continuing my run on the Daniel Craig 007 series, and I have currently made my way to the third installment entitled Skyfall. The film stars Javier Bardem, Judi Dench, Naomi Harris, Berenice Marlowe, Ralph Fiennes, Ben Wyshaw, and of course Daniel Craig is the one and only James Bond. So this third Daniel Craig outing sees James Bond's latest mission go terribly wrong. He is accidentally shot by Naomi Harris's character, Eve Moneypenny. It was a risky call for Judi Dench's M to make for her to take the shot because both the target and Bond were in a tussle together and she wouldn't have been able to hit the target without hitting Bond. So when Bond is presumably dead, a whole string of unfortunate events begin to play out for not only MI6, but for Judi Dench's M as well. After suffering a terrible terrorist attack, MI6 is forced to relocate and essentially put into a corner all throughout this movie, which I absolutely adore that they had this whole sense of dread throughout this entire film. I gotta say, this is one of the darker James Bond films. And I think this has to be my favorite James Bond villain. Javier Bardem playing Raul Silva is just... I feel is, is is a great villain performance. And that's a testament to not only the performance, but the writing for the character as well. I mean, they give him a scheme to really amp up the stakes. I mean, like I said, there's a sense of dread throughout this whole movie. I remember when I saw this in theaters, I was really unsure as to who was gonna make it out of this one alive. A lot of people knew that Judy Dench was probably gonna bite the dust because we knew that this was gonna be her last appearance in a Bond film. And by the way, that is just insane to sit back and count that she has been in seven Bond films from Pierce Bronson's golden eye all the way to Daniel Craig's Skyfall. That is pretty insane and she's up there in numbers with Sean Connery and Roger Moore I believe. So that's really incredible to sit back and realize and I tip my hat off to Judy Dench because man she was a definitive face for me personally when it comes to the James Bond films. Like I mentioned before in my Casino Royale review, I grew up with Pierce Bronson. His Bond was the Bond that I remember having the DVDs for, you know? And of course the Sean Connery and Roger Moore films were on television whenever I had the chance to watch them, but it was really the ones on DVD that I really had the chance to replay over and over and over again. So to know that she carried over from his films onto these new ones was just a real delightful treat, honestly. And of course that fueled the theory whether or not James Bond is just an alias given to another agent or is James Bond his actual name. I like to think, which I, I'm assuming is canon because in Daniel Craig's run of James Bond as we see in this movie in particular, um, James Bond is his name. Like his parents are mentioned in this film and I really love how they went out of their way to really give uh, a real personal story to James Bond that connects back to his childhood home. As a matter of fact, Skyfall is the name of the, the estate that he grew up in. And of course, as Judi Dench's M sadly passes away at the end of this movie, the mantle of M is handed off to Ralph Fiennes' character, Gareth Malroy. And it was so funny because I remember when I was younger, I, I was watching some of the old Bond films and I realized that M was always a dude. He was always a guy. And because to me, Judi Dench was so distinctive in the role that she was like, it, you know, like she was M for me, you know, every time I hear the character of M, I think of Judy Dench. So it's pretty crazy to know that they did something different with the Pierce Bronson films and did a whole gender swap because to me, she's the definitive M. But it is really cool to see Ralph Fiennes pick up that role and I wonder if they're gonna kind of repeat history. So whoever the new Bond is, whatever that new incarnation is, I wonder if they'll have Ralph Fiennes return as that version of M. I think that would be a pretty cool trend to have. Like maybe even Ben Weishaw's uh, Q can be like in the next incarnation of Bond, you know? Or even Naomi Harris's Money Penny, you know? Like these are all actors I would not mind seeing reprise this role, but in future Bond films. This film was directed by Sam Mendes, and I really love. Again, that dark take that Sam Mendes took with this one. He really wanted to strip away the whole MI6 being like an eye in the sky type thing and really make him feel like a rat in the sewer or like a rat in the rat maze, you know? It's just like the, the character of, of, of Silva is just like pushing and pushing MI6 further into this corner to where they can't back up any further, you know? How far can they be pushed? 
how broken down can they be? And I love how that leads to James Bond and Money Penny eventually teaming back up and going out in the field again with each other. I really like the chemistry between Daniel Craig and Naomi Harris in this film. I think they make great partners. I think they have like a great flirtatious vibe about them. They don't seem to be like, you know, falling in love with each other. They know how to keep it professional, but they also know how to have fun with each other. And that's a real interesting dynamic to have, and for it to work so well on screen is just its just awesome to see play out. I feel like I didn't elaborate on this earlier, Javier Bardem's character is a great villain because yes, they give him a great scheme to do, and with that great scheme of like, you know, attacking MI6 and making them feel vulnerable, it makes his presence always looming. You know, all throughout the movie, even when he's not on screen, his presence still feels very much there. He's always watching. He knows their next move. He wants them to go and make their next move because that's all in his plan. And it's pretty scary if you sit back and think about it. And that's what I really admire about the direction of this film and the way they tackled this villain. You know you have a good villain when he doesn't have to be on screen to feel intimidated. And of course with Sam Mendes at the helm, and we'll see this more in Spectre in the next review, I really love the long takes that he decides to go with when shooting a Bond film. I mean, usually when you think of a Bond film, you think of, you know, an action spy thriller and quick cuts, kind of like a born identity type thing where it's like quick cuts here and there and you're going back and forth between fighting. It's feeling all dirty and raw, but that's not the case here. A lot of, a lot of the scenes are like really, uh, given room to breathe. And, and I really admire that in a James Bond movie. Of course, Roger Deakins being the cinematographer, there's just a bunch of beautiful shots all throughout this film. I mean, any one of these at a high resolution could be a great background <laughs> or screensaver. Especially uh, the scenes in Shanghai. Great, great stuff. I mean, it's just it's just real eye-pleasing. The warmth of, of the interiors and the beautiful, vibrant colors of the exterior. It's, it's, just, it's just really beautiful. So with all of that being said, I have to give Skyfall a solid four and a half. Skarsgård's out of five. Yes, I have solid four and a half. I love the dark take that it went with it. The tone was really dreadful and I hardly find anything wrong with this film. I thought the fight scenes were really well done, really entertaining, just like the previous movies. However, it isn't my personal favorite Bond film. The crown is still on Casino Royale's head, so I mean, that's not gonna change personally. But Skyfall is a close second when it comes to my favorites out of the Daniel Craig run of Bond films. So that is it for today. Thank you so much for reaching to the end of this video. Have you seen Skyfall? What did you think of it? Let me know down below. Please like, share, and subscribe to support this little side hobby I am doing. I will be reviewing No Time to Die right after I review Spectre, so please stay tuned for that. Friendly reminder, the rendered image, a live show that I co-host my friends Tyler and Shannon. We go over the latest movie news, updates, and trailers. The link to that channel is down below in the description. I hope you're all safe and well out there, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Oh, and before I go, Adele's Skyfall theme fucking kicks ass. <laughs> <laughs>